Uh, coming at you live from DNHQ in beautiful South Pasadena, California. This is the Blue Heaven Podcast. <laughs> What's going on, Dodgers Nation? My name is Clint. The lighting probably looks weird. We're still figuring things out in here, and we're waiting to paint. But you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at RealFRG. Explain everything. You know, it's really hard when you have my skin tone and you look like you blend in with a bottle of milk. So we're working with the lights that we have, guys. I apologize for looking like I do. I've been doing that for a long time. <laughs> guys, my name is Brooke. You can find me at BrookeMe3 on Twitter. Dance. Come on today's show. Everyone's favorite. The lockout part. Infinity of all time. This is what I say to the lockout. You haven't thrown something in the camera in a pretty long time. I know. I, I saved it specifically for that. You know, that was like 3D. I was going to throw it too. Didn't uh, we pay for 3D? Uh, no, that's a Shrek 3D. What uh, else are we talking about? We're also remembering an icon today. Mr. Jack, Jackie Robinson, his birthday today. We will talk about that a little bit. We also plan on arguing about the Baseball Hall of Fame for no particular reason because we both have opinions on things and we're firmly staunch in our opinions. <laughs> and it's always fun to yell. Plus a two-on-one with Dodgers top prospect, top Pitching prospect, missing Mr. Ryan Papoy. And then a two on one with your mom. Sponsored by. Look, we might have new viewers tonight. You, know, you got to be professional. I'm just kidding. We don't do professional, but you can do that thing that helps us out by subscribing to the, the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Dodgers Nation TV. Hit that bell. You'll be glad you did. Or if for some reason you only want to listen to us, go uh, to iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, Stitch Radio, Pandora, Play FM, everywhere your podcasts are available for free. We live there. Go download us. Leave us a nice review or a five-star and a bad review, and we'll have some fun with it. Also, yeah, we haven't talked about it in a while, but uh, get ready for the season. Download our Dodgers Nation app on the Android and on the other one store. You don't. You don't I, I honestly forgot. I was in the store. iOS. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> Apple. This is Apple. Yeah, you get paid every time you say that. Yeah, yeah. Guy, uh, the guy. The, he's dead. <laughs> he doesn't Man. pay me anymore. Guys, don't forget. This is a live stream. <laughs> the we lighting looks so bad on you. Every single Monday. Does it help if I like move this way? I don't know. I don't go know. ahead, go so ahead. It doesn't matter. No one's looking at me anyways. This is a live stream. We do it every single Monday. So make sure you jump into the comment section and let us know where you're repping Dodgers Nation tonight. We want to talk to you, see what's up with you. Uh, Jorge Romero over on YouTube says, I opened up a nice bottle tonight. Oh, of? I don't know. <laughs> There, were, there was nothing uh, in addition to that. Anthony Keene says, yo, happy Monday, my dudes. Mr. Crush Gut says Clint has cakes. I opened a nice bottle, too. Yes. <laughs> Your boy thick. That's why I always say I'm a thick boy. But I think he meant it in, like, a nice way. So <clears throat> okay. Ernie's a first-timer, so yeah. that's a good time for your mom joke, like, right off, right from the tip. Uh, Elijah's looking at that porn stash. <laughs> Me, too. <laughs> Frank uh, uh, Askin is asking. Will CK22 remain a Dodger? Is Clayton Kershaw going to remain a Dodger? We've talked about that a lot. Yeah, Probably. The answer is yes. Yes. He's probably going to do that. It's a short answer. <laughs> Our friend Craig asking, any progress? Expect any progress on negotiations? Give us a minute. We're going to get there. I promise. It's coming up. Hatfield's in the stream. He puts a palm tree. Is that a good thing? Uh, yeah. There's palm trees in you know, L.A., et cetera. I love L.A.? I love L.A. Tim's in the stream. Tim probably saw that we talked to a friend of Dodgers Nation, Ryan Pepio, and was like, oh, yes, I'm in. Got some good stuff out of him there. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be a, on the live stream. We're going to have a shorter version, but it's not that much shorter. Um, and then on the podcast, I'll probably put the full interview. And then on YouTube, make sure you check out the full interview because, uh, you know, why, why not? <clears throat> Chris asked, are you still taking Granky over Kirsch? If it was one or the other, I might go Granky because this team needs innings, not Kershaw and uh, Granky has proven he can provide more innings than Kershaw so that's your take on that yeah okay that's cool Jorge says I'm buying the Keith Law hype on Diego Cartaya so that's your I boy. am I am buying the <laughs> Tim Rogers hype on Diego Cartaya that's out. more important dodgers 2080.com yeah make sure you uh, check him out because Tim knows everything Leslie's <laughs> checking and says happy Monday boys Leslie good to see you as always you know Leslie's here like every week yeah, because she's a legend. Yeah. I know where I messed up with the lighting. It's all good. It's going to be face. fixed. Yeah, <laughs> it's, on, it's on the face. I mean, you didn't sit here until the end. He, he has to sit away from me because he's afraid of all this sexy, of all this cake. <laughs> Roach says, my four-year-old daughter says, everyone should follow the Blue Heaven Podcast account on Twitter. So go do that, at Blue Heaven Pod. We also are on Twitter or Instagram where I'm trying to put more things on there. But uh, speaking of uh, more things, Rebecca asked, what did you do for your birthday? Oh, I 
<laughs> Nothing good. Patched holes uh, in walls. Patched holes in the walls. Got hammered. Uh, watched uh, a lot of videos. Left McDonald's on my porch until 4 a.m. on accident. <laughs> That's a thing that happened. It never gets better, guys. 20, no matter what they tell you. 29 and, 29 and thriving. Yeah. Went to the mountains. That was cool. There was like, uh, you know. Mountain. Mountains. <laughs> yeah. That's about it. It's crazy how that happens. They put mountain up in there. Yeah. Um, I'm going to keep tweaking um, with the lighting while you take us into... The next part of the show where we honor a legend. Is this right? Jackie would have turned 103? 103. Oh my God. I don't know why that feels like way Born too much. But January uh, 31st, 1919. <laughs> and we uh, are in now not 1919. We are not. That's a good point. So happy birthday, Jackie. Um, there was a nice little event at Dodger Stadium today that uh, Doc was out there doing. And uh, it's kind of cool that he kind of can still do that sort of thing while everything's happening. Because, you know, what else is Dave Roberts going to do when he can't talk to his players or anything like that? Yeah. But so much of what he stood for, still what's being fought for today. Um and you think about icons and legends and people who completely changed the course of human history in sports in particular, there are no other names that come to mind other than Jackie Robinson. Everything that he did, everything that he said was ridiculous, incredible. Everything he put up with. <laughs> That's even more. <laughs> what he was willing to put up with and, and fight through. And a fighter for uh, for civil rights, uh, much against his will. You know, he, he's a quiet, he was a quiet guy. He did not want to be that guy who has a <laughs> that kind of platform but he did um he he did it with style and a plum and um that is why we are now you know every year happy to honor a legend uh this year i think it is this year too the 75th year of jack breaking the color barrier in baseball and we will celebrate that april 15th which is jackie robinson day in baseball and everybody will wear number 42 so they can't tell us apart <laughs> That's uh, that's what they tell us. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. <laughs> that's what the movie said. I, I was on the fence about this one too. I was gonna say there's there's another day of significance coming up for uh, for I would say more for you than anybody else. But uh, in a couple of days, we will officially be one year removed from Kike Hernandez leaving the Dodgers. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> he signed a contract with them Red Sox officially in February, and uh, you know. <clears throat> And that was a happy day for Brook Me 3. But happy days maybe ahead for baseball fans because CBA stuff is kind of happening and kind of not. And, you know, I made the, the intro graphic for this show um, much, much earlier today where we hadn't heard anything from any sides about anything. So it's like, is it, hey, is a no news, good news situation? Uh, it depends on who you're talking to. Um, more has come out since a lot of it from our friends at the athletic evan and uh who's the short one ken kenny ken ken, ken kevin kenvin get nailed it Didn't. um they are doing their work and taking every opportunity to slam the league now that uh you know ken could talk about that kind of stuff as where you get to somebody and look i'm i'm a guy who enjoys uh, mark fine's end i think he does fine work but he's employed by mlb so you're going to get a very slanted approach to mlb's reporting from an mlb reporter so the athletic is uh, you know they strive to be more on the fence of it you know more even keeled about it but where we're at right now the sides are still arguing about money the end um the big sticking really update <laughs> they are meeting Tuesday, tomorrow, which is Tuesday. Um, unless you're listening to this on Tuesday, then it's today. Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. <laughs> February 1st. Um, they, the biggest sticking point, I would say probably, let me rephrase that or reemphasize. I think the biggest sticking point <laughs> might be, I don't, know, I don't know if that helped or hurt, but it might be still in that, that, um, Money going to the younger players, the rookie level players, the zero to three players or the pre-arbitration players, as they call them. Uh, the players in the past have proposed increasing the minimum. And this is coming from the athletic. The, the minimum salary from five hundred and seventy thousand five hundred dollars to seven hundred and seventy five thousand dollars. And that is the major that would be the major league minimum uh the owners on the other hand flipped it and they're they're still trying to do this tiered system where really it's almost like a super two but it's not um 
The owners propose that players will earn $615,000 in the first year, six fifty dollars in the second year, and $700,000 in their third year. So there's a good stretch um, apart in that, and, and I think that's going to remain a big sticking point. Uh, the, the league has made some concessions, and, and the players have made some concessions, but they're still pretty far apart, and it doesn't seem great, but it doesn't seem... I, I mean, with that, like that's still... A decent boost, it, you know, if you're going up to 615, it, that is a boost, and and I think the the league is trying to, you know, implement that. The younger players, the better of the younger players, one the ones with like the higher WAR or whatever, the ones that are more productive can get more money sooner. But then there's still like the other players that aren't all that great. But um, I've said enough. What are your thoughts on all these words I've said? I have no strong opinion on either way. <laughs> it's one of those things where it's like you get to a certain point, and I understand how people feel this way because this is how I've started to feel about it, where I'm like, you know, the details really don't concern me anymore. <laughs> I just need to know when baseball's coming back because we've been doing this for, uh, you know, we did this in 2020, and now we're doing it again in 2022. Aren't you getting a little tired of hearing about the same damn things over and over and over again? But I think this is going to be one of the most important CBAs that sports ever had. So because of that... It's important, obviously, but uh, it, it's not exactly encouraging to see them so far apart in terms of dollars and figures and things like that. But also at the same time, like we knew this. Like, Considering we, we're entering we February, yeah. yeah. We, we were cautiously, uh, unconsciously, hop, optim, unoptimistic. I don't know. We knew it was going to happen. We were secretly not, not we were secretly not domestic about it. And uh, here we are entering February, you know, a third month now of MLB lockout. And as we've said time and time again here on the show um, over the last three months, it's going to take time to cross the T's and dot the T's and then, uh, you know, to get the uh all the free agents all signed up in the whole thing and to get players into spring training um i read this earlier on the espn uh, i guess one agent one rival agent said uh, i'm telling starting pitchers to be ready to pitch three innings on day one so we have seen some dodgers people like alex fessia he's going hard in the paint getting his work in throwing the full pitch mix and it looks like with conviction uh we know there are there are minor, Dodger minor leaguers that can be at the complex. They are working out at Dodger Stadium. They are working out at Camelback Ranch. We know people like uh, today on on Instagram, Alex Wood. <laughs> he posted a former Dodger, Alex Wood, posted posted a funny workaround. Uh, he, he you know he posted a video of of his bullpen and was like, hey, to my coaches, I'm not allowed to talk to. This is what it looks like right now. <laughs> you know, like they're finding ways, and I think a lot of the starters that can be throwing are throwing uh and they're going to be ready you know um they need to be ready to as this rival gm says or whatever agent they need to be ready to go quote up and down right away because they're not going to get the five six weeks it's going to be you know i think we're playing games by march all right brings a good point up says if pitchers and catchers report in february clint should get brooks mustache tattooed on him where dealer's choice whatever tickles your fancy most heel bottom heel. my heel yeah because i want to step on your face ah, <laughs> that's a good one yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh man that was for everybody that had to hear that part um another one of the concerns we heard uh i think it was also dave sa talked about that hey we talked about dv another week because we love ourselves some fast but do you hate me <laughs> uh, Vasse, along with uh, another way, another alliteration of it. The players, as we know, we've talked to players. We've talked to big league players in the past. They don't really trust Rob Manfred. They they have this whole kind of Charlie Brown thing, you know, where one thing is getting put out and then another thing is getting pulled away. I don't know. Like... <laughs> It's like, what, what do you mean? They all start dancing when they play the piano? Like, yeah, yeah, there's one dirty kid. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This makes no sense. <laughs> um, so, and that's a concern, you know, a quote from here, you know, giving the player something and then taking it away from uh, the athletic. There's a lot of other things, but the big thing is going to come down to this, this money situation. And the players are in the right, but how far are, are they going to um, hold the ball here? Because, I mean... The longer they go, the, ML, the MLB people are going to spin it to where the players are the enemy. Oh, the players are holding up, you know, the game for you. This is why things are bad. 
But at the same time, this is like, like, like you said, this is the most important CBA of, of possibly of a generation for baseball players. For sure. Something needs yeah. to change. There needs to be a drastic difference in this game for um, the younger players just because of how the game has advanced with numbers, with analytics, with metrics. Uh, they are able to fine tune so many things and figure out so many ways to uh, save a dollar while making billions. So, yeah. Well, I don't have any solutions. I just hate everything. Everybody just drink a beer. Get over it. You think that would help if they all came in and had beers? Major League Baseball, we are inviting you into our office to have a beer. Uh, I think Eric left some pretzels, and Doug has left some Tootsie Rolls. Come party. We'll get this settled, I promise. Tuesday night spectacular. Live stream all night long. With the GMs. <laughs> Send dollar bills. <laughs> Owners, everybody in here. Yeah, we can get it done. Let's find some. Uh, let's find some comments in here. Uh, Yossi, Yossi, Yossi says, "Let's go Rams." Hey, about them, uh, about them Ramleys. How about them Ramses? Yeah, yeah. they uh, they did the sports. Yeah, well, it was good. Uh, there there were many footballs in in the air. Is that uh, second week? Uh, second week in a row where uh, the kicker, uh, I don't know his first name, I just know his last name is Gay, yeah. um, missed uh, what would have earlier ended up being a difference maker of a kick but then get that uh then kick off it. yeah yeah i would say don't do that but um i'm just really take. happy to have a super bowl where uh both quarterbacks seem like enjoyable people oh by the way i already said uh that uh i can get uh, tattoo. yeah yeah she I, i'm scared now i'd be too <laughs> handshakes a lot right <laughs> my handshakes a lot for sure <laughs> um Michael says you guys are back live. Dodgers talk. Yes. Yes, we have been since uh, our life <laughs> earlier in um, the, the January. Uh, Tim says uh, players lost so much over the last couple of negotiations. You can't undo the screw ups all at once. That is a key thing that I omitted from saying in my brain hole, but you couldn't have said it that much better. Um, there is a lot of ground to make up, but you can't do it all at once. At once. You know, you can't uh, you can't paint a kitchen twice before the first coat dried is that a thing don't count your don't eggs before your basket before the weaved. glass houses roach says i'll use any excuse to drink hey roach you're in you're gonna help us um solve the cuban mlb crisis leslie is down to come have a beer with the both of us we are down um we got a few left so i think eric is also bringing in uh firestone this week Spoiler alert. Well, sign me up. By the way, if you guys haven't checked it out, uh, Three Up, Three Down on our YouTube is back and is on our Instagram as well. Today, he talked about uh, the pitching situation for the Dodgers and how maybe, maybe, maybe things aren't as bad with the pitching staff as is, especially if we get some big ears out of Andre Jackson and friend of the show, Anthony Gonsolin. So check those out. Uh, it's some good stuff from the, the man with the stash, the other stash. The more girthy stash. Hey, hey, hey. Whoa, hey, yo, hey, wow, wow, hey, wait. It's not, about the, it's not about the girth sometimes, you know what I mean? Ask your mom! Speaking of your mom. The echo makes it so much better. Poppy's in the uh, Hall of Fame. Speaking of your mom, Poppy. Big Poppy. David Ortiz is a Hall of Famer. First ballot Hall of Famer. <sighs> reactions i mean i think we talked about this uh last week as it happened because we're in here because we we live in here now right but um i don't listen to you so what did you have to say about yeah, yeah, poppy yeah, being yeah. in the uh, hall of fame no i have no qualm with with david ortiz being in the hall of fame i get it like he you know he brought a the world series back to boston makes sense which time that time <laughs> then the other one and then the other time and then the other and then one. the other time yeah yeah, yeah, yeah for sure <clears throat> but i do have an issue with the first ballot first ballot i do have an issue with the first ballot for sure i do but also like you know they tend to screw things up like jeter I, you know, stuff just happens guys i don't i don't agree with a lot of the stuff. voters for sure like jeter should have been like, one vote really one don't be that guy um i just like that because it upsets the yankees fans i'm like well you weren't unanimous so that sucks <laughs> they're never gonna live that one down mr october isn't that great i guess or mr november <laughs> I, 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 I but did. oh go ahead I asked my issue I'm lies about. A lot of issues. I've got a lot of them. <laughs> I'm just an issue overall. My issue lies with the fact that if David Ortiz can get into the Hall of Fame, it doesn't make any sense that the Rocket 
and Barry Bonds are not also in the Hall of Fame. And no disrespect to Poppy. I like him. I think he's probably a good guy. I don't really know. I've never heard anything really good or bad about him one way or another from people who have met him. But I just don't know how you do it. Bonds, you know, to, to, to this point, Bonds and the Rocket, from what I understand, both kind of a-holes, uh-huh. a-hole personalities. Yeah. But that's not what we're talking about here. I mean, you're talking about dudes who <clears> have, <throat> like, you know, when you're talking about steroid use and things like that and what was tested and yeah. what wasn't and what was the... If you're going to say, oh, the reason they're not in is because they use steroids or they were, you know, convicted of PEDs or however the hell you'd want to say it, but then Poppy... <laughs> tested. tested but that was before the you know the big the big time lockdown. guidelines before actually the lot like cutting it down and that's and, the thing is like so are bonds and and, and the yeah, rocket and so yeah. when you have those standards in place like if you want to come out and say hey in order to be inducted into the baseball hall of fame you, you cannot nice. <laughs> have you cannot have any record of positive tests for steroid use like if you say that like yeah from then on you can use that as the standard it makes sense like by all means we get it uh, let's do it. Um, Anthony Keene also says free Pete Rose too. And I know Tim does not agree with me on this one, but absolutely free Pete Rose. I don't like him. I think he's probably a really bad dude, but in terms of what he did in baseball, Hall of Fame. <coughs> Hall of Fame right? You induct him, you don't let him in. and Don't you let have, him come to the you, event. <laughs> you have, hey, whatever, you know, let's ask. You're talking about Barry Bonds, who was a seven-time MVP award winner. Yeah. At seven time. Hit 762 home runs, drove in almost 2,000 runs, and hit like 300 for his entire career. And and had an OPS above 1,000 <clears> for <throat> his entire career. Like for his career average, above 1,000. Clemens won seven Cy Youngs as well, didn't he? Like Six or seven. Yeah, yeah something like that. I, I forget the numbers, but Rocket was a, a ridiculous beast. Um, and they're, they're both baseball icons. They both uh, have... Some, I mean, it's hard for Clemens to lead because pitching's like, you know, the 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 highest uh, numbers in, in pitching in baseball and whatever are almost unattainable uh, with wins and strikeouts and all that. But Roger, Roger Clemens was insane. Uh, uh, did the roids help? Of course. Did the roids Immensely. help? Barry, of course. I had this, uh, you know, I've, I've had this take for a while and, and people will disagree with me for sure, but... I don't care what you say. Greenies are a performance-enhancing drug as well. Sure, they don't alter your physical form, but if your body isn't as tired, um, you know, because of the methamphetamine, um, we'll just say amphetamine, you know. Hashtag sponsors. Hey, um, YouTube, don't demonetize us. We're not talking about drugs. We're talking about dr- drugs are bad, kids. Drugs yeah, are bad. Uh, Doc Ellis who did the uh, no-hitter on LSD. <laughs> Like I think he should get two spots in the Hall of Fame. That's a Hall of Fame performance, He's Hall of Fame number. But that, all I'm that, saying is, you look at Barry Bonds, dude, from from age 36 through 39. That's 2001 to 2004. The dude OPS 1368 and won four consecutive MVP awards in the National League. I mean, yeah. I get it. Like I understand. Like you're you're taught as a Dodgers fan specifically, and I'll say this specifically as a Dodgers fan, you're taught to hate that man with every fiber of your being. Uh-huh. Everything about him is the worst. You want the worst for him. You hate him so much, but, but, but you, it's game, different. Game respect game. And you got to appreciate um, the numbers, you know, at the end of it, the end of the, the day, the end of the, your career, uh, he can't beat you no more. And what he did was insanity with a baseball bat. Tim uh, kind of backs it up, but he says that Rose basically got the death penalty for the Hall of Fame, and he did. Bonds Clement should be in if Seelig, the enabler, is it. And Seelig was the guy. I mean, Seelig was the dude who basically let this all happen. You, you know, Money. that's that's why we're in this position right now. But at the same time, if we can establish, Lloyd's also saved the game because of Big Mac <laughs> and Sammy Sosa. Baseball who are also banned and shunned from. I mean, I think all of these guys get in through the Veterans Committee at some point. Because I mean, I, I'm sure Bonds does. I'm sure Clemens have does. Some of the best to ever put on a, a big league uniform. You can't not have them in to the shrine for your game. You have something and you explain it. This is like you know, I'm not. I'm not. I'm. Ooh. This is in Alabama where you can't teach. Um, you know, American Reading. history and stuff. You know, you can't teach facts. Um, these things happen. You tell the story, but you're like, hey, look, this guy is really good. Uh, maybe something. Maybe something happened. I mean, I'm sure, you know, isn't Schilling's freaking yellow, bloody sock in there? 
Yeah, that was fake. You didn't actually do that. I stand by that, by the way. I 100% believe that wasn't real. But also, to this point, it says, I'm glad the Hall of Fame has high standards and doesn't let just anybody in. Cheaters don't belong in the Hall of Fame. It wasn't cheating. <laughs> At the time, it yeah. was not cheating. There was no sp- specific rule against it. Nope. They were so up in the air. There was no understanding of it. So if you hold it by today's standards, you could call it cheating now. But back then, it wasn't because no one knew what was allowed and what wasn't allowed because they were like, are these good things? Are these bad things? Are we allowed to do this? Are we not allowed to do this? We probably shouldn't talk about it, right? <laughs> They're like, but Big Mac's hitting 60 plus home runs. And Mark, um, Sammy Sosa's hitting 60 plus home runs. It's a good yeah. time. Yeah, they, they might have gone a little uh, little ham on, on the old pokey pokey. They went a little too, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, have, have you seen a. Uh, have you, We're going to pause have now. Have you seen him lately? We're going to pause now for a, a shout out to our sponsor, Biogenesis. Mm. Eat fresh. <laughs> The Mitchell Report. Yeah. Oh man! Um, so got a so got a we got a couple in here. Dave Luna says, if you're a commissioner, you're guaranteed to get in the hall. Does Manfred go in? If Manfred goes in, I swear I will. I mean, I'll bitch about it. If I'm still doing this, I'll really bitch about it in front of a camera and odd poor lighting that makes Brooke look. Um, uh, I don't know, creepier. What's whiter than being white? <laughs> Ice cold. White cold. <laughs> um, but uh, I. I uh, no, he's not a Hall of Famer. <laughs> Come on now. He's going to be a first ballot, right? Could, do, do commissioners end up for first ballot? Is that how it works? They're only ballot. God, I hate Rob Manfred. Saying that for everybody. Ari, look at that. Dropping facts. Still got to make contact even if you're on roids. Steroids doesn't make you see the ball or hit the ball, uh, you know, more writer, as they say. More writer? More correctable. Uh-huh. You know what they do? They help you recover so you can work out harder and et cetera. That's basically just a uh, protein. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> from, just, from our basic understanding of it. So, yeah, see, Eric Gagne. Bro, if you, bro team. If you don't want Eric Gagne in the Hall of Fame, or if you do want Eric Gagne, if you do want it, if you did want him into the Hall of Fame, that's my point. He's in the Hall of, wow, that was a very good stretch of baseball. He's in a Hall of, that was a really good Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess that's about, uh, that's about it on the, the Hall of Fame stuff. Um Congrats, David Ortiz. <laughs> you, you did it. Wally. <laughs> um, what? Nando says steroids made my wife's boyfriend sound like Mike Tyson. Uh, he's the wife's boyfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. That's a. Hey, we love consistently. Consistent. We love consistently and we love consistency here on the Blue Haven Show. Speaking of love, you guys might uh, love this guy. Coming up, hopefully, this season. But you've heard the name for the last few years, and Brooke had a wonderful, um, mostly pulled out of his ass intro for this guy. But, guys, today we talked to number two Dodgers prospect and the number one pitching prospect of the Dodgers system, Mr. Ryan Pepio, a right-handed pitcher who you guys have seen uh, over the last couple of years in spring training and all that kind of stuff. We talked to Pep, or sorry, Pepois. About uh, about some uh, quality baseball stuff and more, and we are going to hear that right now while Brooke and I uh, wander around aimlessly. What's going on, Dodger Nation? Today we have a pretty special guest for you guys, uh, especially for you prospect lovers out there, because we're being joined by one of the top pitching prospects in the organization right now. He's a former third-round pick of the Dodgers back in 2019, if you can remember way back to 2019. Uh, the uh, he's flown through the minor <laughs> league system, a guy that a lot of pe- a lot of people around Los Angeles very, very excited about. He's Mr. Ryan Pepe O'Ryan. What's going on, man? How are you? Oh, thanks for having me. Yeah, we're excited to have you, man. This is fun. I know you've uh, you've done some things. You've met our, our some of our guys before. Uh, probably like Tim Rogers will ring a bell for you. But uh, you know, now you know you've really made it to the big leagues with this shit show. <laughs> just, just messing around, man. But uh, let's let's dive right into it, man. Obviously, you're a name that uh, has been on a lot of Dodger fans' minds. Particularly, I would say, since especially <laughs> JoJo Gray got traded away. And it's like, hey, who's the next guy in line? Let's get real excited about this guy. But people around the system, around the organization, they've been talking about you for a lot longer. Um, you made it up to AAA last year. You showed some good stuff. You had some some opportunities on on the big stage in a way during spring training. You know, people can see you on the SNLA uh, you know broadcast and all that. Uh, what was fun for you about 2021? learning lessons, all that kind of stuff. What, what were your takeaways? Um, definitely a lot of learning lessons. I mean, Tulsa, I had a great time in double a, um, great group of guys that like kind of went through the minor leagues with, and then the alternate site crew basically was like our whole team. Um, had a f- ton of fun there. Great atmosphere, great stadium. 
uh, great fans, great coaches. So that was just an all around great experience. Triple A had a great experience as well. Definitely a lot of learning lessons. Um, went through a lot of mechanical issues, mental issues, everything kind of just thrown at me. And also being like the youngest guy in the clubhouse almost by like 10 years from some of the guys was, uh, that was definitely interesting when I walked in, they're like, how old are you? And I was like 23 and they're like, oh my gosh, like I, I've been in AAA for 10 years or something like that. And they're like, you're already here. And they're like, when were you drafted? And I was like, 2019. And they're like, Jesus, like, fast <laughs> back. are you kidding me? And I was like, guys, like, I'm just here to do my thing. Get the ball every five, six days and go about it. Don't need any, any special treatment or anything. But um, I definitely got a little razzed about being the young buck on the team, but um, it was a lot of fun. Um, there was, it was a great clubhouse, obviously great coaches. Um, just a bunch of great players. And, you know, it, it made it fun to come to the ballpark every single day, even when stuff wasn't going well on the field. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we talk about all the time, you know, people making that transition from like college ball to actual professional baseball and what that looks like. But you also did it at a time where, you know, hopefully we'll never have to do anything like that ever again. But, you know, you talk about the 2020 season and what that meant for so many people. Um, but just kind of going through that process of like that jump from college to professional baseball, like, how, like, is there anything about that that shocked you, something that you didn't expect? Or, I mean, what was that difficulty like? I think the biggest difference is in college, I was used to throwing every seven days, like once a week. And then once I got into pro ball, I knew it was five every five days. So, like, working out that routine and getting it down from seven days, maybe throwing uh, two bullpens in college sometimes in between starts. And now it's just like, there's your routine. Every fifth day, you grab the ball. It's two days after you grab the ball again on the bullpen. So I think it was just a little bit of getting used to the, the schedule and the routine of it. Um, the Dodgers did a great job with me uh, that year because I'd already thrown a bunch of innings in college. So they kind of just wanted me to get used to the routine, but not have to go five, six innings every single time and just kind of get burnt out through the end of summer. So I was on like 30 pitch count. So sometimes one inning, sometimes three, you never know. Like, you know, maybe get a couple ground ball outs, quick ones, or, you know, a guy battles a 15 pitch at bat. And the next thing you know, after one inning, coach shakes your hand. And I'm like, oh, that sucks. And then you got to wait five more days to throw again. So that was the only thing that stunk about it. But it was nice to just get kind of like brought up and just get used to the uh, routine. And then obviously 2020 happens after that. And then everything gets shut down. Yeah. Have, I mean, I like you said, hopefully this never happens again. But I think for anyone that was in the 2018 to 2019, 2020 draft classes, that has been one of the most interesting roundabout experiences you could possibly have playing playing minor league professional baseball because it is been anything shy of normal there's no book on how to treat that situation there's no precursor there's nobody who's been through it you're talking about coming up to AAA and, and meeting all these veterans they've never been through it either either so it's definitely uh you know props to you for how far you've made it at this point um stepping back a little bit you know you talk about the organization the way they take care of you it's no secret the Dodgers are phenomenal at taking care of young pitching at at, at producing you guys at a, at a record rate. Uh, you know, a lot of doctors are be, be mad at this team for this one trick. But um, I know you're working out at, at Camelback Ranch this offseason. I'm sure that's been a, a, a another opportunity to open some eyes for not only you, but for uh, the organization just uh, working day to day. Uh, I'm assuming there's some lockout parts of it you can't really talk about and everything just because it is a little odd. But uh, how has the uh, the time at Camelback with some of the coaching staff benefited you, in your opinion, this offseason? It's been really good. Um, I think it's definitely kind of helped me because I have been – able to be there and be with the coaching staff where like 40 man guys are not allowed to be there. Um, the past two off seasons, I've either gone to LA for some of the off season or come out to Arizona for early, but my wife and I, we moved out here last spring training and then she stayed here during the season. And so I had the whole off season here, um, which has just been amazing. Just being able to go into the pristine facility that we have over there with coaching staff every single day the same people that you work with through spring training and through the season. So it's just familiar faces, um, familiar ideas. And, you know, you just get to start a little bit earlier. It's a good way to do it. I mean, it's definitely a weird time in baseball right now. So <laughs> you take what you can get when you can get it, I guess. But uh, I mean, 
over the last like year, year plus or whatever it's been, uh, Dodger fans, you know, we hear about you and we hear about Bobby Miller. Like those Bobby are the two Miller. names that come up <laughs> constantly all the time. Um, I'm not sure how much you've actually got the time to see him or see him throw or anything like that. But I'm wondering, do you have your own amateur scouting report on Bobby that you can kind of <laughs> give to all the fans that are excited at the opportunity of having you, Bobby Miller and Walker Buehler in the same pitching rotation one day? <laughs> Bobby is a stud. I mean, I mean, there's not a whole lot you can – add to it than just a stud. I mean, the guy is, he just gets the ball and just goes after. He doesn't care who you are. If you're a 10 year veteran in the big leagues or the number nine hole in the low A team. Um, I mean, he's coming at you with the best stuff. I mean, electric fastball, great breaking balls, uh, highly improved changeup too. So, I mean, I was, he was with me at the alternate site. So I got to see him every five days whenever it was his turn. So, I mean, we spent plenty of time in the hotel together cause we weren't allowed to go anywhere else. Right. Um, and then plenty of time at the field because those were the only two places that we were allowed to go. Um, and then spring training last year, get to throw with him, see him do his thing. And I mean, the guy's just professional. Hey, high marks from a guy with the, the changeup of, of the ilk of yours. If you're saying he's uh, he's improved that much, that's another reason to be excited about you guys uh, coming up, hopefully real, real soon. Um, we know you've done these, these type of things, these sit downs with uh, different podcast blogs or whatever so we got the boring stuff out of the way now we want to do the stupid weird things with you that i mean not like it's not bad but <laughs> just different things we want to know uh how about something simple which is probably one that's been asked but favorite player growing up what what got uh, what got you into baseball um and probably pitching uh what well my favorite i didn't really have a favorite pitcher growing up my favorite player was ken griffey jr my dad is from ohio so uh grew up as a reds fan like so I always, I, mean, I lived like two hours from Great American Ballpark, so we'd always just drive down there. I mean, most of my friends were Cubs fans, so I didn't have a whole lot to cheer for during that <laughs> most of my childhood, but that's okay. I would, at least it was a little closer, but I would go down there and then um, Brandon Phillips. I liked Brandon Phillips when I got a little older. Um, mm. And then obviously like Joey Votto, those were probably my three people that I watched growing up. Cause I mean, selfishly, like I wanted to be a hitter, mm -hmm. but I wasn't, I wasn't great, good enough to do that, but um, and I always liked Bronson Arroyo too because of his high leg kick. Yep. Uh, and uh, like you know when you play like wiffle ball in the backyard yep. and you try to like imitate people, I, <laughs> I always would try to do that. But then you get about two of those in, and it's like all right, the hamstring's about to tear. So <laughs> yeah, you got to stretch a little bit longer for that one for sure. Surprised to hear you, man. You're you're a young buck and going well, going with the kid. Respect, man. Junior was a uh, man. I mean, still is, but Junior's whew, it's a great pick. It's a great pull. Good pick. I like that one a lot. He's one of those guys where I was the uh, I wasn't even left handed, but it was like wiffle ball in the backyard, KGJ we, all day. Get the stance going, get the wiggle. Um, we're really big around here, not necessarily on nicknames. We don't have nicknames for each other. Uh, we don't like each other that much, but we're big on T-shirt ideas. And because of that, we need to know a nickname for you. Do you have a nickname that you had growing up? Do you have one around the you know the dugout or clubhouse or whatever it might be? Because when that happens and you make you get the call to the show, there's gonna be a lot of T-shirts around there. <laughs> Everybody just calls me Pep. Pep. So, yeah, I mean, most people bosh my name a billion times. I've heard it, everything possible, so everybody's called me Pep. Oh, God, what's the uh, the worst iterations of it? Um, I heard P.P. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, that's probably, I mean, a couple other good ones. Like, somebody, like, realized they, they thought they were being, like, cute and smart about it because they thought they're like, oh, this has got to be a French name. So, they were like, Pepois. And I was like, what huh? the heck is that? At least there was an attempt. That's the, hey. the meme right there. There was an the effort was there. A for effort. Execution was. Yeah. They're like, I've been to France. Pepois. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're on here with uh, Ryan Papai. Uh, what? I heard that one, too. I've heard that one, too. <laughs> what are the superstitions, man? What gets you through a ball game? Um, same routine. I'm not like a huge superstition guy. I like to just have like my same routine from when I get to the ballpark. Um, I get there probably way too early for a starter. Most guys will show up like two hours before the game, but then I get super antsy sitting around at home. I was like, well, I might as well just sit in the clubhouse. And <laughs> so I'll go out there and watch some BP, um, watch TV in the clubhouse till about an hour and a half starts and then get my same pregame routine of stretching, rolling out, stretching the training room, then go out and play catch and ready to go. 
Yeah, I can't wait to ask him that one in 10 years. It's like, oh, yeah, I haven't washed my jock in three seasons or something yeah. stupid. You know? up, yeah. <laughs> it was like the uh, Joe Burrow thing where he's talking about like one sock inside out, one not inside out. I was yeah. like, that's an interesting one. I've never heard that one I before. I need to like maybe branch out a little bit and get something more interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. You need to have that thing just so people, you know, can talk about then it. they'll know, <laughs> you know, like how to actually pronounce the name and everybody will be locked in. You're going to definitely hear some weird shit in the first couple of seasons for sure. Uh, I'm guessing no other like weird ticks on the mound. There's nothing. You're you're pretty straight, uh, straight laced. Get the ball to the plate. Uh, no, I'm just more of a grab the ball and go. But I did. I can check it. Year, I did. I mean, I I like wear my pants up high, so I wore stirrups all year. Yeah. Year. So then I did that, and then whenever we have like uh, like alternate uniforms or whatever. Uh, night it was for that night if it was like star wars theme or whatever like uh, i'd look in advance and be like all right am i throwing or not and if i was amazon grab me some new stirrups to match the uniform so i didn't look like an idiot out there there you go amazon proud sponsor of minor league players somehow <laughs> yeah bezos doesn't pay his employees but you know boom boom we straight, got that straight to minor leaguers getting their stirrups in when they need them yeah <laughs> i mean that, you can't beat the prime man you can't hell no uh, I mean, we, we've kind of, we have some good, uh, we're going to call them heckles, I guess, in our comment section, or, you know, on our, uh, <laughs> iTunes reviews or whatever it might be. And we like to read them a lot and love, go over them. Love. It kind of makes us laugh a lot, but I mean, do you have like a highlighted heckle in your life, you know, between college years and kind of coming up? Is there something that you can remember where you're like, that was pretty wild. <laughs> um, best heckle ever. Best it be something. Ever. probably would be, uh, maybe spring training last year when um, I accidentally hit Jose Abreu in the elbow and the White Sox fans at Camelback Ranch were telling me to go back to Little League. Um, <laughs> and uh, there was some other stuff that they said that I was like, wow, you're really telling me, like, you think I was trying to hit him? Like, I don't want right. to kill the guy. I don't want to hurt the guy. Like, right. don't tell me to go hurt myself. Like, right. you know, there's, some, there's some crazy people out there when you accidentally hit the reigning MVP. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's not a that's not a good one. You don't want to go for that one, especially in spring training when uh, the stats don't matter, nothing matters. But it's an important opportunity for you. Um, and people are weird. People are weird, guys. We have more with Ryan. Uh, we we wanted to cut it there because I know people like to yell in the comments um, here and there while we're having some fun with uh, with players. The podcast side will have the full um interview and we'll have the full interview on our youtube channel i just told brooke right before we came back i was like i probably should just put the full interview in here because we have some good stuff you know we find out uh the important things like is a hot dog a sandwich you Brought can also back. find out if uh if the wave bothers him while he's pitching which is great inside information that you I didn't love the think wave right until I, I don't but i didn't think about until i asked him i was like "Ooh, this is coming from a pitcher see how it bugs him Mm-hmm. I forget find out said. more if you go <laughs> I'm gonna guess I'm gonna have to tune in on that you one don't even pay attention you don't even listen to our best friend Ryan PPO <laughs> love the name love the name Bob Nightingale on stream tipping 999 on the super chat saying right Ryan PPO future stud per sources who um didn't even go to single a so good just bypass Rancho I did too yeah I mean you you, you pass I pass by Rancho I pass by Rancho a lot yeah <laughs> um uh one i guess one last thing and if you guys have any other little nuggets you want to talk about um feel free to drop them in the comments but uh you know you jealous you, you didn't go to top golf with me and doug no there's no alcohol there right oh there was hella alcohol we couldn't you alcohol couldn't because it. we were being professionals right yeah Hashtag See, that was my thought i was like there's gonna be alcohol there but we're gonna be media so we won't be able to drink it so i don't want to go yeah, that's when you just go up to like, hello, stall friend. Yeah, because yeah. Doug, Doug tried to be like, hey, you want, you, you want to go? You like golf? And I was like, nope, <laughs> please don't make me go. I don't want to go to this thing at all. Well, I, also only I was also invited that same day by a group of people who were going. We're like, you don't have to pay, just come. And I was like, no. no. <laughs> well, <laughs> thank you. Aren't you so cool? No, I have, I, I have a job. <laughs> it's not real. Allegedly. Oh, we have an office now, so it is a job, actually. Yeah, you can hear it. It talks back. Office. Listen. Top golf. Uh, I went in with low expectations, and they, just they, like they, with your mom, and they crushed it, man. They really did a great job for setting up golf there. That is an awkward situation. There's no, yeah, there's no like great there's, way to there's do it. There's nowhere. Right. 
And, and you know, they, they took advantage of the concourse as much as they could. They had like a, uh, you know, little chipping, um, cornhole, which is a thing, which just sounds dangerous. Don't car, chipping don't, cornhole. don't tailgate with chipping cornhole, car, cornhole. Mm-hmm. Hold on. I'll try that again. Don't tailgate with chipping cornhole because you're going to pay, uh, for damages. No doubt. But, um, did they, fun. uh, what, did they have a limit on what the clubs were? Oh yeah, they nothing past like nine a, iron. Oh really? Yeah. Oh wow. Because you know it's only uh, the length of Dodger Stadium, how and far, you're not how doing. How can it. you hit your nine iron? That nine iron, I don't. So I didn't know what the yardages were. To be honest, yeah. my nine iron, oh, like I forget, like, like one forty, something like that. I'm not a big boy swinger. I can hit my nine iron over the mountains. <laughs> Get my nine over. It's not gonna be over straight, your mom. Yeah, it's not, it's not gonna be straight. But, uh. but they they killed it. I wasn't even trying, and apparently I placed like third. I was third on the leaderboard at one point. Like I popped up on the screen. Check out our video if you haven't seen it yet on our Dodgers Nation uh, TV here on YouTube. Oh, I have a button for that. But it was um good time. Really good time. It's worth I, it just to watch Doug. To be honest with you, <laughs> Doug uh, went in having never played golf. And then I gave him all the tips after we played. The worst part is he beat me at, um, he hit me. No, he beat me at a chipping uh, closest to the whole competition. Oh. Because, you, you know. To, so you have to buy him a Michelada now? I have to buy him a Michelada. Bummer, man. Sucks to suck. What can I say? So you? I fired him. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I stabbed him. So I stabbed him. Uh, again, really good time. I really hope they bring it back. Uh, Mark, do um, you want to try to say that last name? <laughs> that guy, yep. uh, he he took us around there and and was uh, really really helpful. So uh, Top Golf, they got two Top Golf's coming in the area. I think this is an ad. Uh, El Segundo is going to be opening uh, very soon, and Ontario will be opening uh, sometime this year. So maybe we have a Dodgers Nation outing at uh, one of these, and then you can drink. If I can't drink, I don't want to go. That's what I said about church, and that's what I'll say about Top Golf. I was going to say like funerals, but you know, when I in Rome. drink at funerals, that's not a problem. Pre game at a funeral. Uh, <laughs> Dave, um, moving on. Dave said uh, Doug Forrest gumped me. Yeah. Kind of. Like he outran you? Well, I mean, probably. I don't know those tight pants. Ooh, no, I've yeah. seen him waddle. <laughs> but, you know, your boy thick, and thick comes uh, you know, with slow. Um,. Yeah, and he, I told him, man, he's a savant. He just came out of nowhere. Like, he just I was, picks things up, man. I don't know. I was a coward, man. I, I, I totally was he trying said to I be just too felt like running. <laughs> I was running. Uh, Carnivorous Lunar Activity says golf moms rule. Any thoughts on that? Golf moms, uh, yeah, they, they're out there. They're out there. You know what I mean? Does that mean they give birth to you golf? Know, they're out there. You know what I mean? Dave Zander says, how many games do we miss? Projection. I'm gonna, let's I'm throw that your way because why not? How many games are uh, we going to play? We're going to miss. Boo! We're not going to miss one game this year. We'll be on time. Don't you worry your, uh, your uh, regular season. Your little angel eyes. I don't know what the song is. <laughs> In these eyes. Boop, 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 boop. El Pepe Depe is whatever. I, I mean, that's the way I say it. It says Raiders are winning the Super Bowl next week. Hell yes, they are. Um, also says Modelo for the win. Remember when it was a Modelo time, fool? That was a, it was a good time. I've always been a Modelo time. That was a different era of. Have you seen the Modelitos? Uh huh. I've seen those before. I, I didn't know. The I didn't day. know they put, they have like the. The tall boy. That's <laughs> just weird. 24 and the 32. 24-ounce glasses feels uncomfortable. Yeah. But I want those, and I want those in my golf cart. I had the 32s taped to my Because hands. you I was know. playing Edward 32 hands because we didn't have 40s. <laughs> you know, these suck to put in the damn golf cart. No, they don't work. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, like, so you need that 24. <laughs> Guys, if you have 24-ounce uh, Modelo bottles, please send them to us. Um, I will put the... Uh, I'll put the... What is that thing called? I'll put our P.O. box in the, in the bio on this video after it's done. Um, put your P in your V. B. <laughs> Nando 390 says, yeah. uh, I wonder if Kershaw gets free Super Bowl tickets from Stafford. Did you know Stop. I, I don't that do they are anymore. bestest? I'm so tired of it. The joke is worse than the actual fact. Bestest friends. I hate all of you. Hey, whoa. That was 3D. <laughs> it's your mom time, foo. But uh, that, that's about it. Uh, we're hoping there is some sort of movement on the baseball front uh lockout front this week as we said the two sides are meeting on tuesday 
Um, hopefully they have something figured out by Wednesday. And then if that happens, Brooke and I will jump off the roof. We should, uh, we should decide a tattoo for me to get if it starts on time. Like a reasonable one. I'm not going to get like a wiener on me, guys. Like, uh. Hot dog sandwich. Oh, hot dog or sandwich. <laughs> Uh, that's about it, guys. Thanks for tuning in. You hope you had some fun. Um, I should get a tattoo that says your mom. Isn't that bad? I think that's pretty reasonable. Until uh, the next time, tell your mom that we are on the internet at DodgersNation.com. Please subscribe to us on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, Stitcher Radio. Make sure you click on all of those and let them all just play. Uh, uh, that helps the downloads. And then, you know, hashtag sponsors, because why not? Do subscribe to us on YouTube, YouTube.com slash DodgersNationTV. You'll be glad you did. Um, or, or, you know, or, you know, don't. And we'll be sad. And you'll make Doug cry, and that's just a terrible that's, place to be in life, guys. Is I am boy. at Brook Me Three. That guy's at Real FRG. We're on Twitter and Instagram as well. We're at Dodger Nation on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you guys for hanging out. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for everything. You guys are great. You're here every week. We appreciate you so much. Tell your mom I said hello. We'll see you next week. Bye.